Well, first of all, Connor, uh, thanks for having me on. And secondly, I'm glad you're doing this. Um, you, As you mentioned, there is some of the fear of being first, uh, especially in hockey. You know, hockey's got you a different... Say. Yeah, especially <laughs> hockey's got a much different culture. In the NBA, there are players who do this right now, and they wouldn't think, think second about doing it right now. And to me, that's one of the strengths about the NBA is that uh, players feel very empowered there and the the whole personality of the sport is different and i think eventually we will get uh, into uh, a way or a time where the nhl moves towards the nba just in terms of the personalities of the players have to do a better job of selling the sport we're getting there and and we will get there um so i'm glad you're doing this and the reason i i mentioned that i thought connor would be the right person to do this is there are certain players Players in the league who, as I like to explain, they make it easy for the dumb reporters like myself to understand what's going on out there. And Connor was a guy when he played in Toronto, and I know I wasn't the only one. There were other reporters who would go up to him and say, hey, I saw this in your game the other night. Explain it to me. And you could explain it. And it's sort of like um, the why Magic Johnson failed as a basketball coach because everything that Magic Johnson did on the court was instinctive. And he was, I mean, elite almost doesn't serve him directly or fairly. But sometimes when you're a player at your level, it comes so instinctively to you that you can't explain it to other people. So I think that your gift for explanation, it has to be shared. And that's why I think you should eventually, when your time comes 50 years from now and your career is over, you go into media. So I'm glad you're doing this because you have a gift to be able to explain. You know, as for me, um, I was a bit of a chicken as a kid. Uh, if I could do a lot of things over, one of them would be that my mentality as a younger person would have been closer to where it is now. I was soft. I was not a very, uh, never mind even physically, mentally. A lot of things happened in my life that were young that uh, made me kind of softer than I would have liked to have been. And as a result, I didn't have the attitude necessary to improve enough to be an athlete. I had certain uh, non-genetic or certain genetic physical limitations. It was all my parents' fault. I wasn't an elite athlete, but I really wasn't prepared to work at it either. And I love sports and I wanted to get into it. And I, you know, I grew up like many kids my age did, sports fans, with a Sports Illustrated subscription, and I wanted to be a writer. And uh, when I got out of school in 1993, there weren't a lot of jobs available, so I started volunteering in radio, eventually went to TV, and I was always a good reporter. And my strength as a reporter kind of got me to where I am now. I could tell the stories. What you have the gift of and what you will do with this podcast is that you will explain the stories.